There are nutrients that are essential for the body. That means that our body is not able to produce them. And one of the most essential nutrients is omega-3, which is key for our health and something that nowadays we don't consume as we should. This is why in this video we're going to see what are the best sources of omega-3, how much we need to consume, and what happens if we don't. Like many other essential nutrients, we need omega-3 for an immense amount of reactions that occur throughout the body. And whenever we don't have enough omega-3, our body is going to suffer. For example, some of the most common symptoms are ADD, higher risk of depression, inflammation of our brain, that can also affect our cognitive performance, memory problems, and eye problems are among the most common issues. These mental symptoms in our central nervous system appear for a reason. Omega-3, particularly from the subtype DHA, forms a sheet that covers the neurons, something called the myelin sheet. Myelin is like the insulating part of a cable. It allows the electrical impulses to travel faster down the axon of the neuron. And this is essential for proper function of the electrical impulses of your whole body, but mainly your brain. So whenever we have omega-3 deficit, our body is going to create less myelin, which will result in memory problems, problems with focus, and inflammation of the brain that will affect your mood. Another aspect is that we can have cardiovascular problems like hypertension. And here we can see just a few simple aspects that cover a wide array of functions throughout the body. And at a more superficial, we can see problems related to hair loss, dermatitis, dandruff, or even higher tendency for skin allergies. All these problems arise due to the levels of omega-3. The levels of omega-3 are necessary to lower inflammation, and that's because whenever we have high levels of inflammation, for example, in our scalp, it is more common to have dandruff, and if prolonged, the inflammation will lead to hair loss. This means that a good treatment for hair loss will include a treatment to reduce the inflammation of the scalp. And if you wanna know even more symptoms, these include higher rate of sterility, sudden abortion, and other things like arthritis. So what are the differences between omega-3 and omega-6? Like everything in life, we need a balance, and this is also true between the two fatty acids. We need a specific amount of both, of omega-3 and omega-6. But nowadays, we consume a lot more omega-6 than omega-3. This excessive amount of omega-6 can also be an indicator of a premature cognitive deterioration and even premature death. All this occurs because an excessive amount of omega-6 that can damage red blood cells by causing oxidation, making it more difficult to distribute oxygen to the different tissues around the body. This relationship of omega-3 to omega-6 needs to be balanced. Historically, men used to consume a lot more omega-3 than omega-6. The important aspect here is the deficit of omega-3 and the excess of omega-6 can make us more prone to inflammation. This accelerates our aging and it also increases cell damage. In average, depending on our diet, we tend to consume between 12 to 15 times more omega-6 than the omega-3, which makes us more prone to inflammation. Actually, the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, it should be a four to one. Although many doctors believe that we need to consume equal amounts of both, which is, in essence, it tells us that we need more omega-3 and less omega-6. And I'll leave it to you on the screen, the main sources of omega-3 and omega-6, so you know what sort of foods to consume. Are all types of omega-3 the same and do they work the same? Well, actually, the answer is no. There are many different types of omega-3 and they have different functions and different benefits. The first is DHA. DHA is good for the brain, our heart, and our eyes. This also forms part of, of the formation of the myelin sheet, which is what allows the electrical impulses to travel faster. Therefore, if you want to improve your cognitive performance, or perhaps you have ADD, trouble focusing, or you're worried about having dementia in the future, this would be the main type of omega that you would want to consume. It is important that you know that there are different types of omega-3s and this is found in different types of food. There are also studies that have found 
that consuming DHA will reduce aggression even during periods of high stress. Another type is EPA. EPA has benefits on the eyes, heart, and inflammation. It does have a small effect on the brain, but it, don't, it is only mild, given that it is 250 to 300 times less effective on the brain than DHA. However, the reduction of inflammation is key for good and healthy life. And that's because the more inflammation we get, it means that more cells will be damaged and that equals faster aging. On several studies, they've observed that omega-3 helps with problems related to attention and focus. Next, we have ALA, ALA, which is primarily for cardiovascular purposes. And while it does have benefits for both the brain and anti-inflammatory, the primary effect is cardiovascular. It's proven to be able to help reduce cholesterol in the blood. Therefore, if you don't want to take a whole lot of supplements, but you have cardiovascular problems, consider omega-3 oil of this kind. What are the primary sources of omega-3? Well, every type of omega-3 has their own source. And in the case of ALA, we can find primarily in seeds and in dry fruits. One of the issues with this oil is that it can quickly oxidize with light and oxygen. Therefore, if we consume this oil, it is important that we ingest it quickly. And this oxidation problem also applies whenever we consume any kind of fish oil. With DHA and EPA, the primary sources of these two omega-3s are extracted from the ocean. And that can be found in fish, algae, eggs, grass-fed cow's liver. And with regards to the eggs, we have several studies in which the amount of omega-3 varies greatly depending on the animal feed. For example, if we feed the chickens with flax seeds, the eggs will have much higher amount of omega-3 and a smaller impact on our cholesterol levels. I'm not trying to overcomplicate what you should eat. Instead, do worry about where this food came from and how it was produced. For example, many people need potassium and magnesium, but if we grew our own food using crude agricultural methods, such as using our compass to fertilize and or rotating crops, this problem would not be an issue because these minerals would be in our food. Now, what is the best source of omega-3? And hands down, the winner would be krill. Krill is a crustacean found in the ocean and it feeds from plankton, which is essential for us humans to produce more stem cells. And soon we will have a video just on stem cells. Krill serves as food for the majority of the marine mammals like the great blue whale. Krill is also very rich in omega-3 and it has EPA and DHA as well as phosphatidylcholine, a substance that is key to maintain the health of the membrane of our cells and the functionality of sodium potassium pumps. Krill also contains astaxanthin, a carotenoid that gives the bright red color to fish, like in the case of salmon. This carotenoid has an anti-inflammatory property and due to the large abundance of krill in the ocean makes it one of the best sources of omega-3. Now, how much omega-3 do we actually need? Well, the first thing to understand is that not everyone absorbs omega-3 the same way. Omega-3 is a fat or an essential fatty acid, which means that if you have any problem absorbing fats, you will have problems absorbing omega-3. And thus, this will mean that you will need a higher dose than that of another person. For example, if I produce more bile, it becomes easy to absorb fats. However, if there are problems in my gut flora, the bile will change and therefore affect the absorption of fat. So now you can see how complex this is and the many variables that can affect and create different results in every person. On the other hand, if you have a good diet, we can also reduce the omega-3 as a supplement and instead consume it in our food and consume more of omega-5, omega-7, omega-9, or omega-11. And yes, there are many omega oils. We can also consume more gamma linoleic acid and minerals that helps us consume these fats better like magnesium and zinc. And this way we can reduce the amount of omega-3 that we take as supplements. And if you want to incorporate this into your diet, you can consume grass-fed beef or liver, wild-caught fish, olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, algae like spirulina, grounded seeds, and seafood, leafy greens, and probiotics. But to answer the question, how much omega-3 someone should consume? Well, the first thing is that we need to reduce the amount of omega-6 that we consume 
and consume at least one or two grams of omega-3 daily, specifically DHA and EPA. Therefore, also consider that the exact amount of daily intake has not been determined and we need to keep in mind that we need to balance between these two essential fatty acids. There are several important aspects that you need to know and this is that many specialists in nutrition argue that because ALA omega-3 is able to transform into other forms of omega-3 like EPA, you could consume all omega oils from, from vegetables, but unfortunately this information is wrong. Only a very small amount of ALA omega-3 is able to be transformed into other omegas. In general, this transformation occurs only with a 2% of the total amount, but it could be even less. However, on the other hand, we can, we can extract DHA and EPA from algae, but this process is very complex and more costly than simply extracting it from krill. Therefore, ensure that you're able to consume omega-3 from all sources that you can. And if you don't want to consume any animal product, use omega-3 supplements that are extracted from algae and adding flaxseed oil or grounded seeds. And if you don't have a balanced diet that helps you to consume these omega oils like the majority of the people, use supplements so you can obtain the benefits and reduce the damage to your body. And if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and subscribe because we'll be posting more videos like this one every week. Join us as we learn more and more about how to improve our lives and our health. See ya!